Right. Okay, hi. Today we're doing a mediation. It has been referred to us by one of the counselors. We seem to have relationships issues. I'm Devin, I'm the lead mediator, the co-mediator, Aaron, and we're gonna try to work through this. During the mediation, there is no talking, um, talk one at a time, no calling each other names, respect both of each other, and we're gonna try to work this out. Mm -hmm. Right, and this is also voluntary, so it's not forced. If you feel something's going on in mediation, you can always um, chat us on the side to talk to that, or we can ask the other person to step in the room so we can talk to you personally. So, everyone's ready to start. Um, we received the intake form about, you know, the issue and you guys are having a relationship. So, um, Jada, if you want to start and tell us your side of the story. No, I want him to say what he has to say first. Well, okay. If that's cool, the mediators, all right. All right, so what happened was uh, I left my phone and uh, – and pretty much long story short is she saw her friends. She saw my text messages to one of her friends. And I'm trying to explain to her that it wasn't what she thought it was. It was nothing. I wasn't trying to talk to her friend like that. I was just trying to get to figure out where she was. So I called, you know, I, I, well, I text her friend and ask, uh, you know, is Jada with you? And then uh, the conversation, you know, she's like, no, no but uh, and the conversation just got started. And I think she's just a little bit overreacting about it, you know. Wow. Okay. Overreacting. Okay. Now, is this Jada, this friend of yours, is this yes. a close friend or does she know that you are going, like, that you guys are together or what's your relationship with this um, other girl? We weren't best friends, but we were close enough to the point where we could text on occasion. We had a few classes together. We were close enough friends. Okay. So she knew about Derek. I'm sorry, what'd you say? She knew about Derek, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. All the way. Okay. I talked about him all the time. She was very clear on the relationship. She knew what she was doing. Okay. So, how about you go ahead and tell us your side of the story? Okay. So, this is how I feel about him. It doesn't matter about overreacting or if me finding or going through his phone. This is this was the main issue. If I have a friend that you know about and she knows about you as well, why would you betray my trust and what we have been building in a relationship to talk to her or even entertain her? I have seen the text messages. I have evidence. I have screenshots. I am highly upset about how I. But I don't know why you. Why are you upset for? It's no. It's no reason to be upset. I don't understand why you're cutting me off. That's what I don't understand. That's what, what I don't understand. Happened? So I'm gonna finish. I'm going to finish saying what I was going to say. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So it's just, it's just the simple fact that he he's talking as if he did nothing wrong and he wants to continue this relationship but for me it's just like you clearly don't if you disrespected me in that sense right if you just cross the boundaries we had been setting you know now Derek did you set boundaries did you two sit down and set boundaries when the relationship started well no well I guess you can say it was kind of uh, one of those unspoken things, kind of new, but then kind of didn't know. We kind of didn't really literally sit down and discuss stuff like this right here. But, you know, we kind of, I know her very well. And I kind of just, I guess, to a certain degree, kind of figured that she might, you know, respond maybe. But, I, you know, I didn't think that she was going to see, I didn't think it was a big deal even if she did see the messages. Because okay. there was nothing bad or out of the way, I didn't think. All right. You were going to say something, Aaron? Yes. Okay, there, you said basically long story short no long story short this and this happened what in your opinion do you feel was the main issue well i guess uh you know when she saw the messages i guess her whole thing was Derek. he shouldn't been talking to my friend period and i don't care what it was about and i kind of didn't really agree with her because i mean i it, i didn't think it was that serious i mean she knows that i'm with her so so i mean i don't 
I didn't get quite. In her accusing you or getting upset with you, how did that make you feel? Well, it just made me feel like, man, like she just really just want to overreact and like she doesn't really care about the, uh, the relationship in depth. I mean, uh, if she's just going to let something like that uh, come in between it, I mean, I just think, I just thought it was real petty. I didn't think it was a big deal at all. Okay, now Jada, what specifically did he say that made you upset in the text messages? It wasn't, it wasn't just friendly, everyday conversation. It wasn't, hey, can you help me with the homework? Hey, how's your dog? Hey, how's your grandma? No, it was just flirtation. Regardless if he thought so or not. And like I said, it was him entertaining, you know, her in general. It wasn't any specific thing. It was this thing as a whole, the conversations as a whole. It wasn't a one-time thing. It kept reoccurring. They've been talking for days at crazy hours in the morning and at night. And that's just not okay when you're in a relationship. Thank you. Right. Now, when it comes to this situation, Jada, what do you feel you need from Derek? I need him to one own up to the mistake he made because I do feel like this is something we can get past. But if he can't find the fault in what he did wrong in the first place, how can we fix it and move on? So I think what I need from Derek is for him to apologize to me, to him to understand the mistake, to understand how I feel and where I come from so we can move forward if he wants us to work. Now, Derek, do you believe that what you did was, could you see yourself doing something wrong? in this situation, like what your text messages, or like not calls, did you not see an issue with that when you were doing it or was this like friendly to you? Well, at first it was friendly, but now that we're talking about it like this right here, I'm kind of, you know, I, I, can, I just heard her, what she said, and maybe, maybe the wink face was a little bit much. I mean, I really didn't mean nothing by it really, but I mean, I guess that maybe, maybe I should have done a few things differently. Okay. I can kind of, right. well, what I'm saying is I can understand what she's saying. I can, right. I get it. I get it. So I guess what we can take from this right now before we move forward in this mediation is talk everything out before we really start getting arguing and heated about stuff. And when we talk stuff out, we want to actually talk everything out and I just say what you think the other person wants to hear. Right. Mm -hmm. This whole process is about mm -hmm. meeting and finding a common ground and, you know, finding a solution that works for both of you guys that you guys can uh, um, uphold and and make sure the relationship, whether it's more than friends or friendship, and make sure that it works out in the end. Right. And we already asked Jada what her needs were from you, Derek. Derek, what would you need from Jada? Well, I guess, it, you know, because I kind of kind of see that, you know, maybe I should have done things a little bit differently, or if I was even going to initially even text her, I should have made sure that, uh, that I told her about it. Like, hey, listen, this is what I did. I didn't mean nothing by it from the beginning. So what I would need from her is to kind of just understand my perspective too. I wasn't trying to hurt her or nothing. I really wasn't. That really wasn't my intent. So I mean, I, I hate that it went this far, but maybe we can look at maybe her kind of forgiving me for it and maybe move forward from here. Then. Right. Now, Jada, do you think that your best friend or this other girl will have an issue with things changing between her and Derek? Um... I'm not sure about that one. I can't answer that one honestly, but if he does have a problem with communication with Derek, then I mean, that's not really my friend, you right. know? And I mean, that definitely hurts, but I can't really say because I haven't really confronted her about it. And that's, I see where my fault was too. I think I took a lot of my upsetness and anger and disbelief out on Derek rather than confronting the female as well, which I feel like I should have done to gain clarity about the situation. Right. Um, yeah. The girl, do you, Derek, do you think that the change in communication with her, because you will no longer, what I'm hearing from you is that you will no longer be talking to her late at night, um, all kind of text messages throughout the day. Do you think the change in communication might affect you guys' relationship in the future? Well, I, I, I actually agree. I mean, I think if it's going to cause this much problems between me and Jada, man, I, I, I don't want, I, it, I don't really want. It's not that that relationship isn't that important to me as mine or Jada, so I can cut it off. Man, I don't. I mean, you see, it's gonna be easy to do it for me. I mean, because I this is I, I I hate that I got this far, and I don't ever want it to get this far again over something like this. So I say it's gonna be easy to do it. I don't, so 
It's good. Um, go ahead, Aaron. Oh, it's good that you guys both can see your faults and you both can see the con your consequences of your actions, and it makes it easier for you guys to come to compromise. So when it comes to like solutions, you can it's easier to find something that you can all agree upon. Right, and that will really like make it easier for us to come up with the agreement, which we're going to do next. The agreement for the future. What if this happens again? How we're going to handle it? Um, and how we're going to approach it in the first place without overreacting and overthinking and everything like that. So if I could ask Jada what she thinks the agreement should be. Go ahead, Jada. Okay, well, I think we should agree that if there's any type of communication with females, and males from my say too, that is strictly friendly, right. and we keep it, you know, to a minimum and respect each other when we're talking to the other, just so we're not making each other look stupid and innocent, I guess, if that word might be a little too harsh, but embarrassing us in the relationship we're supposed to have. So I guess overall, I'm just saying, know the boundaries and set the boundaries and respect the boundaries of communicating with anybody, really, of the opposite yeah. sex. Right. Um, Derek, do you agree with her agreement, or do you want to add anything or change anything about it? Actually, I agree. I, I agree. I think that uh, she's right. I think I know we should. You know, I, think, I agree with her completely. I don't have anything to add to it. I agree completely. So, in the future, what what I heard, we're going to keep talking to the opposite sex to a minimum. You know, just not necessarily professional, but just friendly. Nothing like too flirtatious, where the other partner would get worried about it, or you shouldn't be concerned about you know, your boyfriend, girlfriend, talking to somebody else with opposite sex, that kind of thing, and really respecting each other. So if something seems to be happening, you know, go ahead and talk to him about it instead of just going off on the wrong people. Um, talk to your partner about it, I would say, first, rather than the other person, because that really confuses other people. Right. right. So that it's probably the best thing for you guys to do to keep this, you know, keep, you know, keep it working. So honesty is definitely the best policy. Right. So I'm in full agreement. That's great. Um, I'm not sure if we have any. We don't have any forms to sign, but like we said before, when we started the mediation, everything here is confidential. You know, we're going to keep this in between us. If something is to arise where you think um, it's happening again, it's getting worse. Um, one of the partners is not holding up the part of the agreement. Come back to us and we can work something else out. We want to make sure that this lasts long, long time agreement and that this doesn't happen again between you two. So if you see, especially if you see the other person that you, um, you're texting Derek, come back into the picture and try to like force their way back into your life basically. Come to us and we can make an agreement with them. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, I'm clear on that. It's confidential with me. Yes. Gotcha. So thank you guys for working this out. Um, we'll probably follow up in about a week, see how everything's going, everything's, the agreements are holding up. But thank you so much. We hope you guys, you know, keep it up. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Jeda, hang on with us. Right? So stay there. And uh, Cindy, okay. Alexandra, and Brenda, uh, if you want to say something, turn your video on and mic on. In the meantime, I'd like to congratulate David and Erin. You did a fantastic job. Thank you. Okay. And uh, uh, j just, uh, uh, just for you to know, I should let me... This on. Just for you to know, uh, David and Erin, next time, if you want, uh, you can also write up the party's agreement, okay? And okay. I will show you how to do that. Okay. All right. Th this time, it didn't make much sense because Jada was on the phone, so she could not right. see the agreement. But next time, we'll try that, okay? Okay. So, so that uh, once the, the uh, disputants have reached an agreement, you can open up a word processing document on your computer. Mm -hmm. You can write up their agreement and share it online with them. So you are all on the same page. 
All right. Okay. So we'll, we'll do that next time. Okay. Um, I have one question. The um forms. I know we're not going to be using all the forms, but could we get the um first form, the guideline form, the guidelines, the rules and stuff, that form? Uh, well, for the purpose of this uh, project, mm -hmm. you you can, we we can we can use a whole processing document. You, you don't need okay. the forms, okay? All right. So we, we, we don't need to get that, that formal. Uh, uh, technically, I think it, it all it went all very well, except that Erin, uh, sometimes it wasn't so easy to hear you. So you 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 have to you may have to adjust to your microphone or something. I, 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 we, could hear, we could hear everybody well, but uh, every sometimes you were not so easy to, to hear. Anyway, uh, Alexandria, uh, since you are the mentor, can you turn? Okay. And uh, okay, so you're the mentor, do the, your job. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I have to say that I'm very impressed with the skills that you already have. Um, it was a great mediation. You, you both worked very well together and bounced off of each other. Um, so let me start with what you guys think. So let's focus on the mediators, Erin and Devin. How did this mediation go in comparison to ones you've done um, live? <laughs> Personally, I think this one was better because the, since the two um the students are separated like forced separation it helps and since you can't talk at the same time or else you can't hear other people that helps as well because we did have that one interruption and jada was really good at saying hey i'm being interrupted so you didn't have to to step in um right. but you felt that that separation stopped that from happening more than it usually does yes most certainly because they both agreed and they both wanted to come to a mutual agreement, it was a lot simpler to have a solution. Yeah. People that people who could not agree upon anything at all, so the solution was to just not agree. So. <laughs> right. So we had willing participants on this one. They were, they yeah. were willing to come to an agreement in a time frame for us, right? Right. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, um, and, it, and it was interesting that we had one person on the phone too because I know the, the mentors, we did simulations similar to this, mm -hmm. um, and it was a different experience. Jada, how was it, uh, your experience being on the phone and only hearing the mediators and, and uh, Derek? Um, I, was, I was a little jealous, I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> I was just telling my mom, I was like, everyone can see each other and I can't see anybody. But at the same time, I really did have to focus on what was being said. Right. So it definitely was different. Not really in a negative way, but I'm, you know, it was definitely different. So what we're saying is the physical separation, it kind of took some of the body language stuff out of it. It did. Really mm -hmm. focused on what people were, yeah. were saying more than the heat in the room. Yes, I think that actually Absolutely. helps because usually people rely on body language to see what the other person is saying, but now we're forced to actually see what we're thinking. Very cool. Well, I have a, um, a couple of notes of what I, again, totally impressed by the skills you already have. Um, you guys did a really good job of getting what the issue was out of each of them. Jada was pretty pretty forthcoming of this was my problem. And then you pulled it out of Derek here, and I think it was you that said, hey, you said long story short. Um, so, well, what does that mean, right? What's the issue there? You were very good at getting those, um, those issues out. Um, and then talking specifically about what each item meant to different people, of what it meant to Derek as opposed to what it meant to Jada. Um, and then I liked that you addressed that there was this sort of third person in the dispute that wasn't here, was the friend. Mm -hmm. um, and acknowledging, hey, there is another person who's not in this discussion, and let's talk about how we're going to address that. Right. Um, so I think you did a great job hitting on all of those points. Great job handling the online forum. And um, <laughs> but I did notice that you guys were great about going, hey, Derek, using the name, what is what are we talking about? Or, hey, Jada. Right. And it makes it simpler to understand who's doing what. 
So disputants, we kind of got to hear from Jada. Derek, how was it for you? You can go ahead, Jada. <laughs> hey, man. Actually, look, and this is what we were doing during this. You are so, like, easy to work with, Derek. It's crazy. No, they're asking you, how did you feel about it? Yeah, how did you feel? Oh, okay. Yeah, Jada well, got to talk already. <laughs> okay, well, I thought, you know. relationship now, Derek. <laughs> I think, hey, we're going to be okay. We're going to live. <laughs> I mean, I think that uh, at first I came from the perspective of not, uh, you know, not couldn't I couldn't really see it. I really, I really didn't. I, I honestly, from the get go of the conversation, didn't see the problem in the conversation. Didn't see how it severed the relationship ties. I didn't see any of it. It just made no sense to me. But then, as the mediators kept on, you know, digging deeper into the situation and helping me, you know, reevaluate my thought process, I began to say, wait. Okay, I kind of, I began to look into her perspective and why she felt that way. So they helped me kind of understand why, because at first I was just like, I mean, really? I mean, I, this is, come on now. I don't think it's that big, you know, you know, I, and I was kind of <laughs> relying off, you know, truths that were unspoken, but they helped me understand. And eventually towards the end, I guess the purpose of it was to help us, we came on common ground and I ended up changing my perspective. And I think if I didn't change my perspective, it would have ended a whole lot different, but they helped me understand it. So, <laughs> yeah. It was all right. Yeah, you did bring up a really good point about um, there was a, a conversation about boundaries and Jada brought up, hey, we crossed mm -hmm. some boundaries and um, I can't remember who brought it up. It was one of you, but you said, hey, did you mm -hmm. talk about boundaries? Oh, oh yeah. Boundaries. And that was an awesome moment in there because I think we think that we've discussed it, but haven't. Right. Um, so you opened the floor for that conversation. So back to the co-mediators, um, what did you feel was like the strength in this and what might you want to do differently for next time? Um, I think definitely the strength would be, I like that the decisions are separated. I like that um, if me and Erin need to talk on the side, we can, because we were. But <laughs> and I like how um, if we needed somebody to step out, we can ask them to step out and like just bring one person in and talk to them because that really does help in real life, of course, to just talk to one person because sometimes they're afraid to tell the other person or it's a really underlying issue that they feel that the other person didn't even know, but it's really affecting the situation at all. So that's just me. Go ahead, Erin. Awesome. I feel like um, them being separate, is it can be good and it can be bad because Sometimes body language can say a lot about someone because there's been times where we've come into a mediation and the person's like, I'm not saying anything at all. This, I'm just, I'm just I don't want to be here. And, you know, their body language says something different. And right. you, know, you, you do have to pull that out of them. But I do feel like them being separate and having to listen to one another separately, it helps way, like the process is a is hundred times better because at least they're not talking over each other and we can find out what the real problem is instead right. of trying to get them to stop arguing and actually listen to each other. So what I'm hear, hearing you say there is that the body language element can be telling in real life, but at least here we remove that so we have to say what we're thinking. We can't communicate it in the other. Right. Absolutely. All right. Awesome job. Um, I, I don't have any other directions or, <laughs> or notes. I've gone through mine. Um, so I don't know what, what our next step in that. Okay. Uh, that's fine. Okay. Uh, Cindy, did, did you have any comments that uh, you would like to make? Of course. Yes. I <laughs> always have comments, don't I, guys? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I thought it went really well for our first time. I think you handled the online world a lot better than I ever could handle it. Um, and y'all seemed so comfortable and it was natural. So I can tell y'all are definitely um, millennial babies and um, what's the next group coming up after y'all, you guys? I'm not sure, but <laughs> <laughs> definitely all millennial babies. Um, I have a couple, just a couple of things. I think what would help, and, and Devin, I, I heard what you said, that if we have some, maybe something on the screen that we can show, maybe going over those ground rules one at a time and you being able to read it like, Here's the first one, second one, because what I didn't hear at the beginning was about confidentiality. You covered it at the end, but at the, at the beginning, I, I didn't hear it. Um, oh, Erin so, has said it, but her okay. voice is really low. Yeah. Thank you, Erin, and I, I just didn't hear it, but it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. You get it, and it's important. But we also need to talk about exceptions to confidentiality. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
and making sure that they are clear about what we can um, to ourselves and what we can't. Right. Um, right. In the agreement, I think one of the things is using specifics. Um, for instance, um, if Derek is going to talk to the friend again, um, what would he say to her? Um, he say to her, um, listen, I, I can't talk to you anymore um, because that could be another problem. And so having specifics in the agreement, I think is very important. Maybe not going too in depth, but just enough where Derek knows what those boundaries are. Right. And just one more thing, um, a little bit of advice giving was given. Y'all were, um, I heard some advice in there. So just be careful about that when you start saying, well, I think it's good for you and things like that, uh, because that's going over to the advice. But okay. otherwise, I thought, I thought for our very first time, very good. Great. So, yay, two thumbs up. Great. And uh, Brenda, uh, uh, can, can we hear her from you? Um, I really, I thought it went so well that everybody as a mediators, disputants, it was slow, like you had that one interruption, but that was about it, and then it was handled really quickly. So that was really good. And I did actually really like the way Alexandria, as a mentor, went afterwards, because I think it gave an opportunity to really reiterate everybody's point of view and clarify it, because even though mediators did it, by her turning around and asking, okay, what did you get out of it? How did you like it? It gives everybody an opportunity to rethink what they got out of it. So I think without that part of Alexandria, everything sort of resolved, but then that just sort of cements it when she makes those comments afterwards, because she did some really excellent observations and really showed that she listened to the mediation. So I thought that was really helpful. I, I, I hope well, you guys thought it was helpful too, but I thought me hearing it, that it was helpful. All right. A, a, a couple of things, because I've uh, run uh, hundreds of uh, online mediation simulations with adult mediators from around the world, okay? So I'd like to make some comments about what you just noticed. And when you're online, uh, the party's behavior is a bit different than face-to-face -face because they feel safer, emotionally and physically safer because they are not across the other in the same room, okay? So there is an element of safety in online mediation, okay? Because they don't need to react to the, to the, other, to the other party. And obviously also online mediation is much easier to set up, it's more convenient, because the parties can participate with whichever device they have. PC, Mac, iPhone, as we have seen today, okay? Uh, now, let me also remind you that the reason we are doing this is to show to all peer mediators across the United States that they can practice their skills online from wherever they are with the assistance of a mentor who will help them learn as much as possible out of each case. Because the whole idea of the simulation is to keep improving. And the only way that you can practice is also by screwing up. So it is good if you, if you learn every time. And if you do something that didn't, didn't work, you can find it out immediately from the other party during the debriefing session. So right. a lot, I think there's a lot to be said about the usefulness of this, which can help uh, peer mediators across the United States. And I would like to congratulate you again, because you are the first ones in the United States to do this together, okay? So what was next is that uh, in the next couple hours, uh, I'm going to send you the video recording of okay. everything. So you can see yourself, okay? Mm -hmm. And I will also send an exit survey for uh, Aaron, David, Derek, and Jade. It only takes five minutes. So, and you will, we will ask you to assess how useful this experience was for you, what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it, what you like to change next time, and so on. 
And I think that we have another mediation scheduled, uh, another simulation scheduled for next week. Okay. Yeah. So I, I can't wait to see you again. But it, it was a fantastic experience, and uh, I hope that you all liked it. All right. Okay. Uh, so we'll see you soon. Okay. And we'll stay in touch. Bye now. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.